The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, CERAP, has asked that funds budgeted at security votes be channeled towards upgrading the health care facilities in the states. And just before President Mohamed Buhari addresses the nation, what is the current situation of Nigeria? This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project has called on state governors in the country to channel budgeted security votes, funds towards upgrading the health care facilities in their state. The group stated this when it asked the governors to make available to it details of the funds they have had so far spent combating COVID-19. This call is coming alongside the order by the Kaduna State Governor, Nasri Erufai, that all senior appointees and top civil servants in the state to donate 50% of their salaries to fund the next phase of the provision of relief items to the vulnerable people in the state. And joining us live to have this conversation is a political analyst um, by Skype, I beg your pardon, Benga Unitlo, and also via telephone, we have the executive director of CERAP, Mr. Tokumbo Mumuni, the executive director of CERAP, and in the live studio, we have with us Mr. Lester Wilcox, a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show this evening. Thank you. It's always my pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Thank you, guys. Now, Mr. Momini, I'm going to start off with you because your group made this call and you want to explain to us why you feel this call is valid at this point in time. Well, you, the point that we are making is that the resources with the state governors are challenging towards the payment of pensions to their former colleagues who are retired governors and the resources being channeled by the governors for the payment of security votes to themselves and some very terrible allowances that is all over for political anger at all should be directed towards this fight and towards the receipt of sound education by people of their various states. The that we have missed now is the effective and efficient sort of task resources. That is what is important now. So that this battle that we are facing, this health crisis and health emergency that we have on our hands will be effectively tackled and we all, uh, we all come out victorious out of the battle. Megan, I wanted to know, do you find this call by Sarah pretty valid? Um, it's, um, it's uh, egg and chicken stuff. Right? You begin to ask yourself, we, what do you do at this critical time? Um, some of the things is highlighting could be some mid or long-term issues. But right now, you're in the midst of a pandemic and you don't begin to plan for war. Uh, you plan for war in a time of peace. I think we have lost the opportunity to be able to put things in place. You are dealing with a virus. And when you are dealing with a virus, you must be ahead of the virus. Um, being ahead of the virus means the key things that you need to do right now. Uh, there has not been any central coordination. That is where we have a challenge with this stuff. I understand the challenge of the health sector in terms of infrastructure, personnel, and all that, but we have not had a central coordination on this issue right from the center. The center is supposed to be the facilitator in terms of driving everything nationwide, while you now have the states that need to have ownership. What we have not seen so far beyond the issue of um, infrastructure is the effective strategy. That's what we have not seen. It's beyond just saying we should put funds and resources into infrastructure. You must have a strategy that is effective, uh, a strategy that will address and localize the issue at hand. We are dealing with a virus. We are not dealing with basic healthcare issues. We don't understand what Serap is talking about in terms of putting funding here and there. But you are talking about an emergency. It's like you are in a situation 
of war. Where, what do you do right now? Resources must be channeled into providing the infrastructure. That's where the center comes in. You've had a lot of funds that have come from the US, from Europe, from UK, from Nigerians as well in their own capacity. So what we have not had is an effective coordination, an effective strategy. That is what is missing here. That's why, for example, we've not developed our capacity so far to be able to take advantage of the purpose of lockdown. The purpose of a lockdown is for you to do what? We are saying we want to stem the, the spread of the virus, but it's not going to happen on its own, except you scale up your capacity to do massive testing. Okay. When you do massive testing, then you can do massive tracing, then you can know how to plan and project based on the numbers you have, then you can know how to allocate resources. These are the things that are missing. It's not just about taking money and pouring money into projects. Yeah. This is an emergency situation. In, in very, it's like yes, you're in a time of much. We'll come back to you. In, in very specific terms, Setup is calling for the security votes to be converted to, to the health um, funding, to health sector funding. How constitutional is this? Well, uh, uh, for me, if Setup is, uh, is if, if Setup's uh, call is for the moment, right now, yes. I think uh, then it's a worthy cause. If it's okay, in the interim, since uh, we are dealing with... Yeah, which is what Benga was saying, that if it's, it's, it comes up like, like just a midterm. Yes, a midterm. Given the situation a, a midterm. Yeah, of course, let's even... I mean, we've already established the fact that the security vote is, an, is, is not a constitutional thing, but it's an exigency that has, I mean, a kind of um, convention that has taken root in the system, in, in the body politics. Now, um, if Kerap is calling that at this time, governors are no longer... There are no, no serious security challenges that people are facing. Therefore, such funds should be allocated. Of course, the government doesn't even need to be told at this point in time. Yeah, but the conversion of, of aid to, to fund the health sector at this point it's, is what is debatable. No, because I mean, right how now... How doable is that? No, it is, because it's just, it's, it's just the environment. It, I mean, if... I mean, and will the state government be willing to do that again? They, I mean, right now, nobody should tell them. I, I mean, like I said, for me, it's not a call on the, of the, on the long run. It's a call... For the, if it's a call for the in, immediate, then I, I, I think I, I will go with it. Because right now, nobody should even tell the governors that the fact that they need to find money in order to have ad hoc uh, 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 arrangement okay. to fight this pandemic. Just like Benga is saying, fighting this pandemic. More than, I, I don't, but if you're talking about in the long run, I think this pandemic will have defined a lot of things in the country in terms of our budgetary allocation to health. It will define it as a whole. Because right now, we have seen it all that, we, that, that there will be a, a, a point in our, in our lives, in the entire world, where you will need what you have developed cap, uh, capacity I mean, for. Yeah, the capacity that you have locally for. Yeah. Because right now, nobody has the fact that nobody can go out to get medical treatment. So that will, in itself, define it for the governors. And nobody needs to tell anybody that, look, the things that we had joked with in the past, the things that we have neglected and think it doesn't matter, that this pandemic, this situation has told us that it matters a lot and something needs to be done about it going forward. Now, Mr. Momuni, I'm concerned. Has there been any responses from the state governors as yet? And what do you think could be an alternative should in case, you know, they don't respond to you this way? I believe that they, will show, they should show responsibility, leadership and accountability. Because what we are saying is what makes sense. So they cannot but respond. Yeah, but what, what makes sense that they most respond times to isn't, what, they do not respond isn't what they necessarily because we do. Because we have made the request under the Children of Promotion Act. If they fail to respond, the registered trustees of Selah shall take the appropriate step to mitigate the matter in court. Now, I'm not concerned, Mr. Momuni. I mean, is there any other way you expect these governors or the government to show transparency and leadership should they refuse to give up the security vote? Are there other alternatives that we could, we could actually possibly explore? You, know, you see, we will mobilize the people in their various states to look them directly in the eye and say this is what we want. The money does not belong to the governor. The money belongs to Nigerians. The resources belong to Nigerians. And it must be spent to meet the needs of the Nigerian people. 
Remember that the Council of Nigeria has said the, the welfare and security of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So a governor that is not ready to do that is more than doing arm robbery against the citizens of the state and Nigeria in the state. And this we will force them to do and to invite. Begnon Itilo, will the state governors be betraying their constitutional oath to, of office if they continue to receive security votes and, you know, and pay live pensions uh, as it is of, as, in regards to what Serap is calling for? Um, for me, that, that's what um, security votes. Um, there have been a lot of um, controversy around it. That's where exactly the, that's what comes from. Um, we all know that every state has a budget he has an allocation he has an appropriation he has what if um, syndicated towards the health sector security and all that um you know i said earlier this issue is beyond just having money to spend we can talk all about how we want the governors to be accountable to divert their security for them but we what i'm saying is what is the strategy right from the center to the states. If you don't have an effective strategy, and we're just talking about the issue of money alone, we're not going to achieve any results with this pandemic, and we might see ourselves locked down for the next two months. Because right now, you we need to start asking ourselves a question. What resources are they initially allocated to the health sector? What um, are they allocated also? Because most of the budgets are are not granular enough for you to see some of these things. So we are, if we're asking security vote, do you even know what that is in terms of value? That's what I'm saying. Strategy first. The center, if you see what is happening all over the world, the center is the facilitator in this matter. The central government is the facilitator. It coordinates with the state. And when you coordinate, the state now takes ownership. That's when we begin to know how much exactly do you need in terms of the strategy you have put on the table to find the pandemic. What exactly do we need? What resource in terms of money, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of personnel? We have not addressed these. Key, those are the key concerns. It's not just about money. In Nigeria, we always think when we throw money at things, it will solve the problem. What we need, four weeks has passed. The first two weeks, past, we never did an audit to evaluate and see, okay, what have we learned? What have we missed? How much of resources do we need? Personnel, do we need to scale up our testing? If we're going to do a lockdown, what is it should be the strategy of the lockdown? Do we need to deploy military into some areas to keep people from roaming around? So those are the issues I think we should be talking about, not the issue of whether a governor has a security budget, because you don't even know what that security budget, you don't know the value. We don't know even the value of what we should be spending on this pandemic. No, yeah, okay, Benga, knows Benga, what just the value hold your is. thought. Yeah, just hold your thought there. I want to throw that lastly to Mr. Mumuni before we let him go this evening. Now, Mr. Mumuni, that, that's a valid concern. We we really cannot quantify the value of this money that goes into security votes. So, what what is Serap doing in, in regards to this? How how do you for you to call for transparency and accountability? The figures must be exact and known. Do do you do you, do you are you privy to this? You see, we know that Nigerian governors have over the years expended billions of naira at security votes. And in spite of all the spendings they have made, which they still want to make, we have not seen anything serious about the security of the Nigerian state. And that is why we say, rather than loading money into a bottomless pit, we now have a serious emergency challenge, which the security votes should be used for. And we, we, we are talking of billions of Naira. We are talking of billions of Naira also assigned for their predecessors in office as pensions. We are talking of billions of naira in terms of allowances committed or dedicated to past politicians. We say 
an emergency now exists in all the various states in Nigeria, as a matter of fact, in all the Nigerian nations that requires serious and urgent intervention. And we, uh, we expect that this money should be committed for that meeting. Uh, finally, Mr. Mumu, before I let you go, this is not the first time Serap is making such calls for accountability and not so much of results we've seen in, in past calls. What, what difference do you think this is going to make this time, given, given the pandemic we're fighting? Let me get that question again. This is not the first time Serap is making such calls for accountability from public office holders and the government and governors. And we've not so much seen the, the much needed results and responses from them. What, what difference do you think this will make, given that we're fighting a pandemic and everybody is actually still uncertain about the, the real situation? You see, what we, 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 we do at Sera, we must call the government to order when things are being done in a slip short manner. So we, have, we, we don't have to get tired that they are not responding in earlier times. Yeah, but the reason for your call is to get... Mr. Mumini, we should not... Yes, Mr. Mumini, I understand you don't need to get tired for your call for accountability, but result is also needed in this call. So by, by way of result... Exactly. Yeah, by way of result, I'm concerned see, now. No, the, the only way to tackle in the government that is constituted in Nigeria is to go by lawful means. And that is what we, we are doing and we are we shall continue to do. We believe that when calls are made, when demands are made pursuant to existing laws, if they do not respond, we have the recourse under the law to proceed further to ensure that they comply and they meet what we want. And that we shall continue to do. Mr. Detokumo Mumuni, Executive Director, Serap, thank you. It's been a pleasure having you on Plus Politics. It's a pleasure to be talking to you. Now, Alex, let's, let's, um, let's explore alternatives right here, how we can have these governors be accountable, transparent, and provide leadership in the face of the pandemic. You see, um, the question you asked uh, Mr. Momoni, which I don't think he really answered, answered the yes. fact that who knows the quantum, the value of this security force? Yes. Nobody knows. He, he was talking about billions. And yeah, yeah, no, well, no exact figure over the years, yes, we agree that billions might yeah. have been. Because I, I know that uh, it was rumored, I, I, I have not seen the books, that some of the rich south-south states, that oil producing states, some governors take as much as uh, 750 million per month, so up to a billion when they are coffers per month as security votes. So nobody knows the quantum. So in some poor states, some not less uh, endowed states. I remember in those days, uh, the Oyo State saga, when the strong man of Ibadan politics was asking for 25%, he, he made us know that Elijah used to collect 159 million uh, security votes every month. So he needed a quarter of that and all that. So it varies. So as of today, nobody knows the quantum. So the, I don't even know what Serap will be holding on to. Yeah, Serap as a pressure group can make the call. But you see, it can go to court with under the Freedom of Information Act bill and all whatnot. The only the only body that is constitutionally required to call for to create accountability for the states is the State of the Assembly. The unfortunate thing is that the State of the Assembly has all become puppets of governors. I mean, which is the sad reality of our democracy. The governors have made themselves so powerful. In fact, the governors are more powerful in their states than the president is powerful in the country. Because the, governor has, the governors have decided, in fact, they hold local government captive. They, they have the local government in their pockets. They have the state of assemblies in their pockets. They decide who becomes a, look, a, 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 a honorable member assembly. in every constituency. They decide who is the speaker. So, and that is the only body statutorily, I mean, constitutionally uh, 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 empowered to hold these uh, states, uh, these governors accountable. But they have the elected. So, the, the bodies like Serap and other uh, pressure groups will keep making these calls. They will keep putting pressures, but I tell you, like you asked the question, yeah. Serap has been on the forefront of calling for this, but with little, I won't say result. none, with little result, result, because the real persons that are constitutionally empowered to do this, this thing are all sleeping dogs that are not even ready. They are, not, they are just sleeping bulldogs, 
and they are not budgets are just rubber stamps. I've never seen any serious debate in any House of Assembly in this country. That, and, that is, and that is the only body that can hold us that can hold us accountable. Right. So and since they are not doing it, set up which them I mean, I I I mean I have things to do with set up members and all what individually. So I wish them all luck. We'll keep making the call. But I tell you, if the state of assemblies are, are not are working to their responsibilities, and then, then, then the governor is going to run riot with the resources of the state. Interesting. Talking about the governors. Uh, Benga Unitilo, in, in a related development, the Kaduna state governor yesterday extended the lockdown in the state by another 30 days and has ordered all senior appointees and top civil servants in the state to donate 50% of their salaries to fund the next phase of the provisions of relief items to vulnerable people in the state. Let's begin to analyze the, the social and political correctness of this move by the governor, if you will, Benga. Uh, well, well um, the, the, the lockdown of the state, um, the EAS is, um, uh, they have their challenges for locking down the state. Uh, part of the challenge is that people are moving from different parts of the neighboring states uh, uh, to move into the states um, and they don't have control over that, so they want to reduce, they want to um, mitigate in terms of um, interstate traffic entering the states, so that you don't have people coming cross border, uh, spreading the risk of people contacting the virus. Um, and also part of the agenda is um, scale down on um, the spread of the virus. And, um, well, that's what I keep saying. He, he, he said a 30 days lockdown for the states. But a few questions, we, I, some of the questions I asked earlier. What is the lockdown going, what is the strategy that you will now begin to run? Is it just to stop people from entering the states or that you want to start running, scaling up on your testing across all the states and start gathering numbers so that you can have data and statistics to plan and project and say, okay, these are the what we anticipate will happen in the next two weeks, this is the number of beds we might be needing. These are the number of people that we feel might be quarantined. These are the number of people where death we might be expecting. So this is the resource we'll be channeling into this. Thing. All we're just hearing is people just think lockdown works on its own. It does not work on its own. There are things that you have to break down in granular terms that we have to hear that you are doing that can be measured. Um, that, 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 that data can be generated from. As much as I can say there is a plus behind the lockdown, let's ask ourselves, what is the strategy behind the lockdown, okay. the things you begin to do right from day one? And now you are going to measure that you are making progress, whether you have recoveries, whether you are the, the curve is going down, whether you have allocated also resource in terms of people that are not be able to carry out their economic activities. We don't even have data to say these are the number of the poor, maybe in Kaduna, in the environs, that you can now say, okay, this is what we are going to allocate in terms of feeding, in terms of um, palliatives that we have to put in place to ensure that, because when you ask people to stay at home and people don't have food to eat, they, they, because we live in a society where 80, 90% of the people must go out every day to do transactions, or to buy and sell for them to eat. If the government is not going to mitigate that under a lockdown, you will see that the enforcement is not going to be effective. No matter how high-handed you become, people will rebel because one way or the other, if you don't feed well, you are, if you don't feed well and you're hungry, you're even more prone to sickness, prone to the effect of a virus. So those are the issues for me. People might applaud the lockdown, but, but what is the strategy behind it. What exactly are the things you'll be doing in the next two, three, four weeks to show us that these are the results that will be achieved in terms of stemming down the spread of the virus? Right. Those are the things yeah. I want Mr. to hear. Mr. Lester, let me come to you now. Amazingly, those concerns that, that will be affected by these are the special advisors, secretaries, the commissioners, permanent secretaries, and heads of agencies. Now, we're all in this together, and everybody's kind of been beaten by the the lockdown and the yes. pandemic, social, economic um, variables are, are pretty much uncertain at this point in time. I'm always for alternatives. What, is there an alternative to what the Cardinal State Governor imposed or, or making his, um, his staff to do? Could we have an alternative no, at, to at, the 50% cut in salaries? At this point, uh, alternatives are limited in raising funds for 
starting uh, for a lot of uh, uh, because this how emergency sufficient, spending. How sufficient are now, these, are again, these, are these yes, with so, this funds so, so, be so, as, so, as a means so, of raising so, funds? So, so that's where I'm going. Yeah. Um, the, the, the legality of it, well, he's, they are his political appointees. And so it can be a, a moral situation. It's not, it's, it's not legal. You cannot force anybody to part with the salary. Uh, yeah. So long as you've been, uh, you have uh, uh, appointed somebody to at a position. Except and, because it's going to withdraw from source. Well, no, before, what I'm saying, yeah. even at that, yeah. it is not legal for you to take somebody's salary uh, without, without like, any consent. just cause. Yeah. consent, yes. So, but on a moral sweating uh, uh, environment, you might say, okay, gentlemen, we are all political appointees. Let us make sacrifices, 50% of salaries. Now, you're talking about the, uh, how much it's going to amount to. For yes. me, it's little. Because if you look at the salaries of, uh, the salary, I'm talking of salaries now, of public office holders, it's not to write them about, sincerely. The salaries are not to write them about. If you look at it based on the uh, federal, uh, federal uh, the revenue mobilization and fiscal action uh, approved, where they, where, where, they, where, where, where they kill the money is in order overhead costs and allowances. That's right. where they kill the money. Mr. Not Lester the Wilcox, you're still with me on the next segment. Thank you for your contribution. And so are you. Bango Nitilot, thank you for staying with us. And you're still with us on the next segment. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we'll discuss the present issues in Nigeria as regards to coronavirus and the lockdown and its effect. And if an extension is needed, stay with us.